Hi, it's Lel from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. And today, if you're looking for any inspiration on, uh, on the collaboration that Annie Sloan did, three designed by Prima in the Transfer Flower Garden, then I'm going to show you how to make cute vintage just pop with it. Okay, so this is our victim for this week. Um, what can I say about this? is really interesting. I've never come across that. I've still got a furniture. If you look inside it, it's like your antique vintage filing cabinet. It's got parts in there for, you know, storing things, which I'm going to keep in it because I think that's quite useful. I quite like it the way it is. It's a nice size. It's not too big. It's not too small. Um, I'm going to be taking the handles off and reapplying the handles. Uh, actually, do you know what? I'm going to be painting it with the handles on, I think. Um, I want them to be white, um, so I'm just going to... Uh, I don't know, I'm painting with my handles on, actually. It's got a veneer top with not any damage to it. Um, four nice legs, they're a bit worse for wear. Um, I'll tape off the copper at the bottom and the sides are... What? Kind of like that. Gives us a nice frame. Yeah, to work on. Uh, what's the plan for today? Plan is Annie Sloan's um, redesigned by Prima Transfer, which is called Flower Garden. I don't know if you've seen it. You know how much I love Annie Sloan. She's amazing. She's a lovely person. Uh, so I'm going to do this on this, but well, let's not get ahead of herself and go, right, this is what I'm going to do because. I want to see it painted first. What am I going to do today? Today we're a wee bit more technical um, than we normally do. Normally I just mash my colours today and there. Today we're going to be actually doing a bullet end. Uh, I like a nice blend over this. But um, before I do anything, I am going to paint this with Annie Sloan's French linen, uh, not French linen, um, Paris Grey, Paris Grey. I'll tell you in a minute what it is. Um, just to set the scene for it, it's just a kind of canvas coat for underneath what we're going to do. And then we'll pick out our kind of three colours that I'm going to blend to make this work. And um, I'll tape off these little brass feet. I was going to get Martin to remove the handles, but I no longer need to do that. And I think I will do something nice with the inside. Um, I know that's more work. But I think it warrants it. Sometimes it's just after that. I think sometimes it's wee and cute and lovely. And so why not? Let's just go to town on it. So I'll probably do something nice with the inside as well. Maybe even put some transfers on the inside. So let's get down to business. I'm going to give this a clean uh, tape off my feet. And we'll come back with the paint and I'll show you what the canvas coat is. Canvas coat is just the base coat before you apply your blend over the top. Normally a sort of mid-tone of the three colours or... You might be blending with more than three, but I kind of pick a mid colour out of the out of the three, and it's not one that I'm going to probably be using in the blend, but it's kind of enough for a canvas coat. Okay, so with everything that I kind of like, I jump to the end and rewind it back. I think that's what helps me quite often plan things. So jumping ahead to the transfer, I like to look at the colours of the transfer. So that I know what colours I've got now. I like to set the scene for the transfers, but this time I'm just going to do a really soft, gentle blend, quite unlike myself. Kind of, you know, it's just, I'm just going to let the transfer speak for itself. Mm. Do you like that, man? Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> um, so there's just a kind of olive greeny, sort of brown and a pink. That's the only colours that are in this. So we know we're pretty good to go for anything we've got on top of them. <coughs> oh. Um, what colours are we going to use? Right, we have Hornflower, which is the darkest of browns, which I'm probably going to use for a little bit of shading and detail and a little bit of drama. I'm not using that in the blend, but I've sat that at the side. Then I have Cocoa, which is a sort of, kind of brownie cocoa colour. <laughs> yeah, it's a creamy sort of colour, creamy brown. Then I've got Antoinette, which is the light sort of almost baby pink. And then we've got Old Ochre, which is your off-white. And then I've got Scandi pink, Scandinavian pink, which is this colour. So, But I've also sat olive to the side because if I was to hazard a guess in my transfer, I think we've got these sort of two colours. Um, but putting the chocolate 
putting the horn flower and the olive to the side right now, these will be my sort of blendy colours, right? So when I said pick a mid-tone for your base coat, I would pick this one. Yeah? This is the one I'd pick, the middle of the road one, because this is the darky, edgy one. This is the middly, middly one. And this is the filler. And so this is the base coat. Does that make sense? It does to me. But yeah, you could base coat it with any of them. But I like to pick the mid one. So anyway, I've sanded, taken the handles off. I was planning on keeping them on because I was going to paint the handles in it. But then it would get messy with the blend. And I don't want that. I want them to be quite crisp. Yeah, there's a lot of things as well. And I'm just going to spray them, I think, and it's white at the end. Um, so they've gone. And uh, pretty much I'm ready to go. What I will say is, earlier I was using um, Capri Pink. I'm looking for something a wee bit... Ooh, we need to have a bit of bougie about it. So I think what I'm going to do, if you mix um, Antoinette and um, Capri pink together, you get a really bright hot pink. I quite like it. So let's have a look at this and see what colour this is. Because this is the colour I'm going to do inside. Now, there's not nearly enough here. I'll have to mix up more um, off camera. But that is the sort of kind of candy pink I'm looking for for the inside. Yeah, I'll need to mix up more. But that's, that's the sort of, and it make, uses up that piece of Capri pink that I had. But that's the colour I'm going to do inside. Now when you base coat inside, two solid coats, leaving it to dry in between. Don't keep going back to it. It's going to be slightly complicated for me to do in here because I've got all those, you know, dividers, but I'm going to paint inside. Um, we will use our colours effectively. I'm thinking of maybe putting the, this is why I've got the olive out. I'm thinking of maybe doing the olive colour in here. In fact, let's make a management decision right now. The olive colour is going in there. There's going to be more pales kind of around here and sort of framed out, getting lighter and lighter to the centre. This is how it's all going to go down. But before we can do any of those things, I am going to open it up, do the two coats on the inside. Because sometimes I like to leave, you've seen me do it two ways, sometimes I'll paint the cupboard at an end when I know I do that, especially with my Indian furniture. And then as bad furniture, I usually leave it the inside to the end because I pick one colour out of the whole bunch that I know is going to make it pop. This time round, well, we know that this is going to pop with what's going on anyway. You can just look at it compared to the rest. You know it's going to make a difference. So I'm going to go and do the inside two coats. And then I'm going to do the base coat, the canvas coat and Antoinette. So when they come back, it's going to be pink. Inside is going to be hot pink, and I think in here, you know, you'll maybe get surprised when you come back, will be the olive, you'll see. Okay, so I did what I said I was going to do. I've painted the inside with the sort of bubblegum pink. I've done the olive on the doors and the olive up inside there. Um, yep. You'll probably see it when you... Now, uh, obviously I'm masking tape this edge just now. I know this looks slightly more bubblegum pink than um, the Antoinette, but I had some of the pink from the inside left over, so I just chucked it in there. And it's my it's my middle coat, base coat. It's not going to be seen, so if you're thinking, mm, that's kind of interesting Barbie shade, that's why. Now, ordinarily, with a big piece of furniture, you'd be using great big, massive blending brushes, big ones, you know, for bigger furniture. But since this is small, sometimes I like to blend with just art, especially smaller brushes. You know, it's, it's it's entirely up to you. You can still get away with um, oh, you can still get away with a project like a round blend, blending brush for this. But I'm trying to be a little bit more. I want to finesse this a little bit more. What do you need? You need a little bit of water, and I've got my cocoa, my Scandi pink, my horn flower, which I want to kind of add around the edges. And this was the offending shade of bubblegum pink, which I've lightened up again, so we're not so bad. That's what we're going to, this is the array that we're going to use. I'm not using any olive at the moment. So um, let's just have a wee think about, oh, and brushes. These are my brushes. So smaller, nice, soft ones, yeah. Always spray your brush, not your furniture. So make sure you start with a nice, moist brush. Um, just to help it blend over the stripe paint. So we want to kind of, I'm actually doing, I'm going to start with a smaller brush because I want to just put a tiny little 
dark brown mage around it. So um going in with the the sort of um horn flare here. And you will continually need to water your brush down um, if you want to, any hope to blend it, especially because I'm in the warm as well. Okay, so unfortunately our microphones died. So what I'm doing here is I'm applying the horn flower around the edges and I'm making each door a three minute zone. So I've actually sprayed some water on my on my mix mat so that my paint's moving. Remember, don't you know, don't spray your furniture. So I've got that on there. And um what I'm now doing is I'm adding the um the next paint along and I'm kind of blending it in as I go. I'm actually doing this on the hoof. You know, I'm not I'm not um kind of putting it all on and then blending it into one. And then this is me adding the Scandi pink into the centre. And again, you can see that I'm working. I'm working at my edges. I'm trying to get quite a good blend going there to begin with. I'm wanting one of those blends that looks kind of like it moves in in, in lighter squares. So I've got my pink in there now. But what I'm actually trying to do now is I'm trying to move that pink more into the, um, the mid-tone and I'm... I've swapped brushes now. I've got a slightly bigger um, of my flat brushes. And then, as you can see, I'm going vertical, horizontal, diagonal. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get rid of the the definite transition, the definite transition line. I'm, I'm putting a little bit more horn flower in it because I'm kind of losing that by, you know, continually blending it. And I'm wanting to put that back in. I'm wanting that to look slightly dark and a little bit worn. I'm going across the whole thing. Um, that's me spraying my brush again, making sure that it's nice and wet and it's it's going to move in. I've got still kind of got kind of like a kind of quite a square look down the bottom. I'm happy with the top. I'm hoping that I go on and fix that, but I probably do um, at some point. That's me putting my lighter tone, my lightest tone in the centre, just to give myself a little bit of a highlight in the middle. Yeah, that's me kind of what, that's it. Um, I, I was hoping, I, I mean, I was hoping I go back and actually kind of repair that. I can see it now in real time as I'm, I'm doing the voiceover. So again, I'm putting a wee bit more of a highlight and I want my highlight to look kind of like almost, almost dribbled on. Um, it's there, but it's kind of running down a bit. So um, when you get to the point where you are quite happy with how you've blended a piece of furniture, um, move on. Don't, don't keep like messing around with that. I'm trying to, I think I'm talking about how you're going to bring it in and bring it in and bring it into the middle. Um, I'm obviously not happy with the highlight there, so I'm putting a little bit more on it. And you can see what, what way I'm using my brush. I'm using it in big, large strokes up and down. So this is me moving on to the second door. And I'm, I'm just repeating the process, really. You will see me going back to that second door because it gets a little bit touched up um, as I go. So the horn flower's gone round the edges and you can see my edge is pretty thin when it comes to the darker chocolate paint, because you don't need as you don't I don't don't want too big a thick line. Um, well, there you go. I've made that a wee bit thick, but um, I'm hoping that I've got plenty of water in my brush at this point, and I can blend it. And I know I can because I've seen the finished article, so I've managed it. Blending, there's no secret. You just need to practice on boards. Practice, practice, practice. And there's all different kinds of blending that you can do. And when you get kind of prolific and really good at blending, you can blend all sorts of things. The secret to blending is having water on your brush. It's not going to blend otherwise, especially when you've done a canvas coat underneath it. It's going to, your paintbrush is going to stick. So the secret to making sure that you can make paint blend is really water on your brush. How you move your brush, as I said, all different ways. And, um, you know, that's another way of making sure that you can blend it. So at this point, I just go on and I blend the whole piece. I do the size, the top, and I come back and do the, white, the, the aperture later on. OK, so I've done the blend all over. And what I've done is just this aperture round here, which I said we're going to make a bit different. I've painted that, the horn flower. Before we get to this, I just want to show you what I'm doing around the edges. I'm taking a little bit of the olive, which was the colour we didn't use, and I'm just kind of just kind of running it kind of like down 
down, not, it's hard to explain, uh, not down all of it, just down some of it, just to give a kind of suggestion of this sort of green colour that we're bringing back in. Um, down and then rubbing it out to kind of, I've, I've watered down my paint a little bit just so it smooths. And just bring that up. It's just to kind of give another area of grunge. Um, let's see up here. Okay, can you believe it? My microphone has died again. Um, so I continue on with, this is a grungy, messy blend and the sort of edges of any sort of furniture, the sort of dirt would collect up around the edges. And so the reason for adding the olive paint is just to kind of grunge it up and I'm smoothing it out and moving it across my furniture with my finger um, just to get that look. I'm touching up the bottom edge as well around the corners. I'm kind of doing the top of that little rim and the underneath side as well so that the, the, the kind of middle is highlighted. I'm just kind of checking that I've got it right um, and I'm running around it. I also do my keyholes. You can see it on the other cabinet, not on the one that I was just working on. I've went, I'll use the olive on the keyhole. Now what I've got is Annie Sloan's Old Ochre and where I've applied the Hornflower paint, I'm doing it's not quite dry brushing. There's a wee bit more paint on my brush than that, but I'm trying to make sure that I don't eradicate all the brown that's underneath. And I'm only doing the the aperture of this. This is the only thing that I'm changing to this. I wanted to give it a real kind of vintage look. And I thought if I added some white, this would look really quite good. I actually go and I do the feet um, white as well. But um, the trick with this is to apply it sort of lightly and then go back and do the same again and um, making sure that you keep parts that haven't been painted and um, this is going to feature quite heavily when I go to put the transfer on so it's just making sure that I've got a nice surface and a little bit different interest from the bottom part of the cabinet and quite a long a long time ago if you saw sort of vintage cabinets you quite often saw things with different parts where they were coloured. That's me touching up a little part that I touched with my white brush and I was just showing you how I repaired it. And that was just like dabbing over with the, the colour that I'd used previously and that eradicates any boo-boos. But anyway, that's me back up again, finishing off painting the white and just getting the best sort of vintage look I can. Okay, so I'm just getting my general plan together on how I'm going to use this. So. Flower Garland Transfer comes with two sheets. This is the first sheet, which is more smaller, more ditzy print, and the bigger ones, okay? I'm gonna be removing the big ones right now because I don't need them at the moment. Now, how am I gonna cut this up? I'm gonna start by, I want these little thin trims for the white part. So I'm just going to get get these off first of all. And I'm just going to put that up over there just now. So the back stays on it. Because it's this middle section here I'm actually looking for. So I think it's because the door the doors are not big, so I don't want to put anything too big across it. I'd like it to look quite cute. So as per usual, I've decided to overcomplicate it. Um, right, so I've got this. I'm just going to set this over here behind me. So let's have a wee look. See here. I am going to do something like. Sorry, I'm just laughing about the camera. She's trying not hard not to cough or sniff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, coughing and sniffing is our thing at the moment. I'm just taking all these little middle parts out and we will reuse them. But at the moment, my plan is to go right. Oh, I'll just make sure my glasses are kind of. I want to kind of go right through the center. And I think I'm going to do something like one, something like that on the top. Let's just cut this to one and a half so that we know. And that's the ones for the other side. Okay. So let's just start by applying these, I think. I think that's probably the best way to kind of work this out. 
Let me just get the other piece so that I know what I'm dealing with here. Mm, I want to put them up against each other so you shouldn't do this, you should always keep it on the backing I'm being quite naughty. But there you go. What do you expect? I didn't cut that the right side, did I? Yeah, I did. Right, okay, let's try that again. With the... oh, do you know? Sorry, not quite on it at the moment. It's, what, the, it's the cold. What am I in a nice. How the way up? Oh, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you're here, Marin. You keep me up here. Yeah, I want them quite close up, so. um, Yeah, I think I'm going to commit to this one here first. Now, I've been through this many, many times with you before. There are, I have a myriad and I've got um, apply and transfers. A video which I'll get Martin to put up above me um, how to apply transfer video so so that you're um, you know like you can get the actual you know you, how you actually do it but you just peel off the back and as I t when I was doing the last lot of transfers I was saying you have to be kind of careful with the halo so we'll get to that in a minute let's just try and get this on first See where we're going with that. Can you hear the dog snoring, Matt? Our dog's in his bed just behind us and it's snoring up a treat. I don't know why he's snoring. It's not like he's done anything energetic to snore. I know. He has a brilliant life, Eddie. For, for, a, for a dog that's so tiny, he makes a hell of a noise. I know. I know. He really does. He's, 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 mini, he's tiny. He, he, really, does, he does You think snorts. he was like a great, great Dane or I something. Know, he, <laughs> he snorts and he, oh, he splutters and he makes all kinds of noises, Eddie. My children laugh at him. It's just, just the way he is. Where he's loved. He is very loved. And I'm just using that side to just burnish that down in there like that. I'm going to do the same in the next one. So whatever I do on this door, I'll be repeating it on this door. And again, I just want to... I want to get right into that edge there because I want them to kind of really kind of meet quite significantly. Yeah. So I'm going to do those and this and this on this, this side, but I'm just wondering whether I could go for broken because I think I'm going to have enough. Uh, I might have to do the mental mass in a minute. Mental gymnastics has been an awful lot of it recently. <laughs> Martin, that's when that's when you're you're wheeled out for that. The mental gymnastics. <laughs> yeah. It's not it's not what I'm known for. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't even laugh. Right, so and I'm just taking that. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, um, but this piece has been sealed uh, with sealer just so that they stick on nice. And I forgot to say, sorry about the sound in this part. Of the oh, video. yeah. We've been filming so long today that both of, our, both of our microphones just died at exactly the same moment. See, what we're trying to actually do is we're trying to get ahead of the game because we're away next week. Um, not only are we going away to the Christmas show, but we decided to have a sort of mini break. Oh, and we'll get some footage mm -hmm. for the channel members where we've hired a little glamping pod. We can't wait. We're dead excited. Anyway, um, so we're trying to do that so we can actually get away. I'm wondering whether I could just do here, here. So that takes one, two, three, four. No, one, two, it takes three, two. four. Mm, I'm not going to have enough. Oh, Why are you not having enough? Because I need the same for the other door, man. need four. Two. So one, two, two whole three, ones. four. Right, so I need two, but then there's only that one left. See? There's no other sheet. No. Ah. Uh. Actually, there's one. What's this about? Oh, that's that. Oh, I might have one. Oh, I don't know. I'll get to that in a minute. I, I, can't, <laughs> I, actually can't, I can't actually both fathom of our, it Both out. of our heads are somewhat so confuddled one, at the two. moment. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to have enough to do it. Or side, right? Okay, back to the drawing board. So we'll just put them down the bottom. So these are going to go down the bottom here. And then I think probably then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these up out of here so they're separate. 
and have these kind of coming, these little doofers, whatever we're calling them. That's a Ginny word, a doofer, when she says things like that. Um, have these coming down here. Um, I could have a look at the other sheet here and go, see, I really don't want to use this because I don't know how much it's going to take to go around this part at the top. I mean, I could have just, but I've already cut them. I don't want to do is too big there. And plus, as per usual, I'm being incredibly tight. I wanted to do them more than one piece of furniture because that's why, you know. One, one thing at a time. Do the door. Do this door. Do the door. Do, do the door. <laughs> and worry about the rest of it later. Well, yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. Well, I was just kind of saying, you know, like. It has to be valuable. It's not only a small cupboard. If I end up going transfer crazy on this, then you're not making much money. So that's true. Be careful because you can get pulled in very quickly, and before you know it, you've you've your budget's blown. Very true. That there, yeah. I've always been kind of like a bit mindful of that because when I first started. I used to worry that I would just make a mess of them and then my money would have gone down the drain. So I really like this one. Obviously, it's been done by Annie and she's done it's just really cute. It's kind of not usually, it's not my sort of wheelhouse to go so cutesy. Certainly not Bohemian, it's very vintage, but the cabinet itself is very vintage, so it all kind of works very nicely. It's symbiotic. Right, I'm not going to watch you make me scrape any more of this. I'm going to take these off and then by then I'll have worked out the sides. Okay, so I managed to get all the way around, apart from down here, but that's okay because it's going to start looking a bit busy. I've cut out these circles for here, but that's way too busy. Even for me, it's too busy. So what I've decided is that I've got parts here and I'm just going to do something like this. And I'm not even going to think about it. I'm not going to overthink about it. I know my hand is quite square. Um, and I want it to come, kind of come out from my handle. So I'm thinking, I quite like there, right? And we're going to do the same on the other side. I'm just kind of putting as much onto it so you can see where it's going to go and I can do the scraping off camera. And you were whispering, just say it out loud if it's not right. So the bottom of the plastic is so you're over the closer on this side than you're on that side. Oh, I see. It's not a bottom. No, it's box. not. It's just, you cut it yeah, out like so do you want to just... All right. Yep, I'll retract that. <laughs> no, I do. Shut up, Mark. No, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think that, Martin. <laughs> Come on. Tell me, is that right, darling? It looks lovely. Right. No, it wasn't cut out from the same part, so you couldn't really go by that edge. Right, so they're going to go there. I've already put a strip all up along there because I couldn't wait to see how it looked, which left me, what did I do with it? The same again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this. Oh, if I can get a hold of the edge. Along this little edge here, I'm going to have to cut it. Should have cut it out before I did it. It's a bit too wide for my space. So... I know you've seen me do transfer so many times. I just like you to see my positioning, but I'm probably just going to go on and just apply quite a lot of it. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is Martin has to go and pick up Charlie from college. <laughs> 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 and a bathroom. And she, and she cannot wait, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I, I want to, tomorrow I would like to have a bit more of a relaxing day. So... And anyway, you're not you're not you're not seeing anything that you haven't seen so many times before. I mean, I will. I think what I'm going to this smaller design here. I might see if I can cut these ones in half, like I've done here, and have them on 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 the sides, just at the top here, and I'll do something in the center. So you're not really missing much else, really. Just this what I've already done, but in small on the sides, and I'll do some sort of. I don't want to have too much on it. Um, I don't think it needs too much. It's cute as the way it is. I will put some in the inside. I think I'm going to put them here, maybe something on the door. Just a little nod to it. I don't normally put transfers in the inside of furniture because I think you're never going to get your money back on that. But um, this has got quite a lot in it and I haven't really used that much. So um, I'll do a little bit of that in the inside, I think, as well. So 
that's all I'm really doing. I mean, I'm not Martin, you're not even due to leave, and I'm saying, you know, like I'm, I've got this. Yeah. Um. So. Five minutes. Do that along there. We're not very professional. Are we? <laughs> Stop it's filming. Disgusting. You're going to college, discussing what you're going to do. That's terrible. <laughs> What I will say at this stage is, um, let me just put this one on quickly and I'll show you. Um, you, I was looking at the halo on these, the, that's the little plastic edge that runs around it all, that sticks it all down. I was looking to see, and I, you know, it's not really incredibly noticeable, but um, I don't, oh, wait till I get my finger, I'm all fingers and thumbs, but just make, where you got, be kind of careful where you cut it because then you're not coming straight onto the, the kind of edge that will make it peel off. I put um, Redesign by Prima Transfers on completely different to the way I put IOD ones on. It's really unusual that I do that. I just I just do them differently. I kind of do a different thing. I kind of pull and kind of do this with these ones, which I don't do that. Really. IOD, I just kind of rub it all and uh, by the way, oh, I don't want that. So, down to the bottom, just making sure I'm not pulling any of it off. There we go. And just finish that in nice. Now, what I was going to show you was halos. I could take sandpaper to it, but if you don't have sandpaper, you don't have a top tip, see if you get a piece of brown paper like packaging paper or anything like that if you just it's great it's just like the extra fine sandpaper that I use and all that does is it just kind of beds it down and kind of makes the halo less obvious so that's a good wee top tip the brown paper is just the same as the 2000 um grit sandpaper I use and it just I think it just makes all the difference so there we go. Yeah, I'm actually really liking this. I think it's super duper cute. You will notice maybe halos more when the light's shining on them. I can see where that's the way I'm sitting where the light is shining on that. So I just want to make sure that that's how I just rub over the paper. Okay, so I'm just going to get on, apply the rest of my transfers, as I've said, and then we are going to get to. Oh, this has already been sealed to put the transfer on. You have to seal it again, but this time I'm going to go up over the top of it and wax, clear wax, and then we're going to do some white wax. And it's all going to get very exciting. Okay. Okay, so I've applied the transfers to the top, and this is how I've done it. And I just did what I said I was going to do on both sides. Yeah. Okay, the front's all done. Now what I've done is I've waxed it. Now for those that have never waxed before, you get your wax on your brush and you just rub it in to the furniture, making sure that you get it. Now this has already had a coat, but well, okay, we'll give it another one. Um, do this first, making sure you get it all in. It will change colour slightly, but that's okay. It'll settle itself out. And then what you do is you wipe your excess off. Well, I, I'm just using... Um, like shop towel stuff but just give it a wipe off like that yeah i've waxed inside this was i only did this with the transfers inside that was all i did and i'll tell you why when it's such a small piece if you were to put so many transfers on the outside and filled it with transfers on the inside you're in it for 40 pounds already and this piece is small so you don't want to you know you want to be able to be able to do another piece of furniture with with your what you've left over and a half so that's good now I, what I want to finish with is, is um, a little bit of white wax now you, white white wax goes over clear wax remember that I say this every time if it's, if it's dark or white what I say is remembering clear wax first just so you can manipulate it if you make a mistake if you just put it straight on you'll end up with a really white piece of furniture and what I'm going to try and do is just kind of accentuate some of this sort of just get that to stick in that little groove there down that door. The brush is quite fuzzy, so just a kind of like I'm not going to put it everywhere. Just oh, that's a wee bit far out. Something like that, I think. 
I don't really know if I'm going to put it anywhere else. Let's see what it's like down here. I'm going to have white uh, clay waxed everywhere so I can really do whatever I like. I'm trying to kind of maybe almost kind of highlight that off. It's just kind of giving it a sort of distress, sort of a sticky kind of finish, which kind of complements this part up here. The only other thing I would suggest is when you've got like a recess like this, the wax will sit really nice in there. If you wanted to do a long in there in this recess, you can put it in there and then all you need to do is come back with your cloth and it will sit in there quite nicely if you wanted to do something like that and I probably will. So just different with this one, it's a big thick, thick one but you'll see it more along this bottom edge. You just kind of rub it, run it in and then just wipe what you don't want away. You can be quite heavy with it. I mean. And then just kind of like that so that it sits in there. And that gives it another kind of slight bit of interest. Quite like that little build up there in the corner. I'll leave it so I've got that there. I'll put a wee bit of build up on that side. Anyway, this is it nearly finished. I'm just going to go back to the front again. Sorry, Mark, I'm jumping around. What I did was I took my handles and I sprayed them with white spray paint. But I didn't like them because this is old ochre, Annie Sloan's old ochre, which is an off-white. So when I put the white handles, they were too stark. So what I did was I then put some old ochre over the top of the white and then I space sealed them. And it's come out a sort of kind of pearlescent sort of look, which I quite like. Now when they when this when they do it on, I think these are gonna look really nice and wet. Martin to apply the handles, finish off the white wax on this side here. And then we'll get it over for staging. Now, I won't be able to keep this over in the shed. I'll have to bring it back over to the house again till it's properly cured because the temperature will affect the wax. But that's okay. I mean, that's just that's the nature of the job, isn't it? So I'll go get these things finished. Okay, so what did we do? Um, wasn't really incredibly complicated because it's quite a small piece. Did a sort of blend, we put our base coat over, well it was kind of ended up Barbie pink, our base coat, but base coat is important, so our canvas coat. So then what I did, I used hot, <coughs> hot flower, cocoa and standy pink and blended those together. Then put a little bit of olive kind of tones on, on the front before I applied the transfer. Up here I did hot flower and then I just kind of distress painted it old ochre which is a very um kind of off white it's, it's the white i prefer it's not stark um applied the transfer in a way that i found pleasing put it up around there did the sides i sprayed my handles white but then went back with a little bit of old ochre because they were too white and too stark and it's kind of when i spray sealed them it's made them sort of paralyzed which I quite like and you can still see some of the white behind it like it's kind of aged and got a little bit dirty this is an odd an, 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 not an odd but it's an unusual piece we've not came across one like this before um it's obviously vintage um it's old veering into you know old old it's funny because inside it has the dividers for like filing system um which is really interesting not to anything like that can tell by its handles and the way it's been made it's a nice piece of furniture inside i did a mix of i had some capri pink which i just added a little bit of um antoinette to it to make that sort of bubblegum pink to just have a little bit of because it's so vintage and kind of muted on the outside and i always think it's nice to give it a little bit of roar on the inside so there you have it transfers just remember you want your transfers to do at least two pieces of furniture especially if it's a small piece you don't want to use a whole transfer on a small piece of furniture so i've got probably the same again uh left over which i can use for another project i didn't go crazy on the inside and that's up to you what you do when you apply transfers because i sometimes think are you going to get your money back for putting them on the inside are you just putting money down the drain I've spoken before about paint on the inside as well. You know, it depends whether you're going to get your money back on your piece or not. This just wanting to do it. It was just it was a nice piece of furniture, and I thought if it's this kind of old style sort of filing cabinet, that's nice. I've just kind of staged it out with some old blankets and just kind of get the vintage theme going. I think this one is actually incredibly cute. <laughs> it's 
nice size as well. Nice for a big tall plant. And I would, you know, you could put that in a hallway as well. Or you could put it in a bedroom. You could put it in a bathroom. There's plenty of scope for it. So if you feel like trying out um, the Rose Gallery transfer, it's really easy to work with. It's got all the Annie Sloan feels as far as I'm concerned when you see our paintings. It's just, it's really nice, very delicate. And it's a typical kind of Annie Sloan design, which is really easy to use. Nice if you've got a bigger piece and you want to kind of go along the edges of drawers and things like that. Plenty of scope for things like that. You can still cut it out and hack it up and do your own thing as well. So either or. Anyway, I've been well. I've been made by Marley. Um, thanks for watching today. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. You can share it if you want and don't forget to subscribe. And Martin and I, the lovely Martin, will hopefully be better in our next video because I'm just about to choke. So I'm trying to rush through this now to the end. So we'll see you next Sunday, Martin. Yeah, um, if any of you guys are new subscribers, because there's an awful lot of you recently, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're hoping great. you're enjoying the content. For everybody else, you know, thanks for sticking with us. We really appreciate every single one of you. And yeah, we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.